Welcome to Communication 100, and this video is a review on Chapter 7, Professional Communication in Healthcare. And so we need to skip to the third slide. Why is communication important in healthcare? Well, obviously it's going to assist your teamwork, but then it's also going to help with patient satisfaction, patient safety, as well as patient management. Communication in these three areas is very important, as well as understanding compliance with treatment. In other words, that we do the correct procedures, and that's all about communicating these things correctly. Now, going back to your patient, it's going to lower the level of anxiety of both patient and healthcare worker, and it's going to help with job satisfaction. If people understand each other, they are more happy in their job and they will be more efficient. So these points are important in understanding why communication is important in healthcare. Now we can move on to the basics of communication in healthcare. Number one is it's important to have a positive attitude. And that is just smiling at people and believing or thinking the best of them. And secondly, it's important to have clear and simple speech, to avoid using technical or medical terms, but rather to explain things to a patient who does not understand medical terminology. Number three is balance, listening and speaking. In other words, communication in healthcare means I listen as well as explain. And then lastly is being open-minded. So um, just listening to suggestions and this links to point number three and the fifth point is it shows appreciation. Um, well this is a classroom discussion so we can ask the question in the video, why do you think a patient might present as difficult? The word present means that that's how they appear. Well, if we did this in class, the ideas that you would generate would be the patient is in pain, uh, they are afraid, they don't know what's happening to them, in other words, and they are in shock, they are um, confused by what's happening to them, and they don't understand what is wrong with them. They don't understand the injury or the illness. And... Number four is important that a patient can often be afraid of being alone. They're normally with family and now suddenly they are dealing with an illness. And finally, a patient may feel angry. Well, why would they be angry? Well, because they have been left alone. They haven't been given treatment. They're feeling uncomfortable. The pain level is increasing. And so these are some reasons. And these five reasons are very important as to understand why a patient may appear difficult. Right. Before we continue, we need to look at the second point, And that is to understand that in healthcare, the primary goal is to diagnose the problem. Okay. It's not to counsel the patient. We are there to diagnose the problem and apply the correct treatment. So just remember that it is an important question. Now, you get different types of difficult patients. You'll get the silent patient. In other words, they won't say a thing, but inside they are very concerned, full of anxiety, fear. And then you'll get the patient who's afraid and they just don't stop talking. That's quite common. And then, as I mentioned, you get the angry patient. They're upset because they've got the disease. They're upset because they were left alone. There are many reasons why they may be angry. And then you get the depressed or the sad patient. They're going to be very down, very negative. And then you get the patient who's anxious. They're very nervous. So that's very important. And lastly, we get the superior patient. Now, often people with a very high education can appear as a superior patient. They've done the research or they think they know what's going on and they will speak down to the caregivers. And it's just a coping mechanism. Let's not understand it personally. 
Now, what are some common mistakes that people in healthcare make? Well, firstly, it's using a lot of medical or technical words, terms. Secondly, is speaking too fast. Patient doesn't understand. And thirdly, well, not so often, but a healthcare worker can get angry or impatient with a patient, and that does happen. And lastly, when we are very busy, we can ignore the patient's concerns. And that goes back to what I said earlier, is we must learn to balance listening and speaking. Now, how do we deal with a difficult patient? Well, I've got a few ideas for you. Number one is build rapport. Now, that is isn't a French word used in English, which means connection or relationship professionally. So in other words, we listen and we try to understand it. We make the patient feel like they're a person that we care about. Number two is it's important to remain calm and professional. Now, number three links back to the previous two points is to use active listening skills and a calm tone of voice. So if the patient, like in the picture, is showing very much uh, anger uh, gestures, then we remain calm. Now, number four is acknowledge their concern. In other words, you will say, I understand you're afraid, or I understand that this is quite scary for you. Now, if none of that works, then we move to the next point. Sorry about the numbering, but that is be assertive. You are the caregiver, they are the patient, and you can then be assertive. In other words, say, excuse me, sir, or excuse me, ma'am, it's not okay for you to speak to me, th to me that way. I'm going to call the doctor or I'm going to call the senior nurse um, and I'm going to ask them to speak to you. So that's being assertive where you respect the person, but you do not allow yourself to be abused. And finally, set up an action plan. In other words, uh, decide with the patient what you're going to do and get them to agree with it and say, I'm going to call the doctor. He will be here in about 10 minutes and you can explain it to him. Is that okay with you? Or your medication is due in 25 minutes. I will come back and see you then. Will that be okay with you? Okay, and those are the important things from chapter 7. So I hope you uh, review this. Make sure you know these key points and good luck with the exam.